If you haven't already seen, I am out of racing right now because of a broken wrist from the Blue Dome crit at Tulsa Tough. If you want to see how exactly that happened, you can check out the Blue Dome crit race video that I put out a few weeks ago. But anyways, this video I want to focus on the post-injury recovery process an athlete has to undergo when dealing with an injury like this that takes them out of their sport. And I really hope that this video doesn't apply to you and that you're injured right now. But if you ever do find yourself injured, hopefully you can go back to this video and find some helpful advice to help you get through that recovery process. Now, this video might only be for me and one of my athletes, Aaron, who happens to also be injured right now. So I don't expect it to be amazingly high views, but I am all about putting out good, high quality content, and I believe that this video is gonna be just that. Obviously, there is a physical side to injury, whether that be a broken bone, a pulled muscle, or even just prolonged illness. Your body takes a hit. And I'm not a doctor, and I'm not about to pretend to be one in this video, so the physical side of your recovery process should be totally taken care of by your professional medical team. And I'm not about to talk about that in this video. What I wanna talk about in this video is the mental side of your recovery process. The fortitude and the mental toughness and the focus that it takes to overcome your injury and get back to competition. As you might already know, I'm very interested in the mental side of sports performance. So naturally, I'm also interested in the mental side of injury. And this video is gonna be focused primarily around one book called Rebound by Kerry Jackson Cheadle and Cindy Kuzma. The back of it describes it as the essential guide to psychological recovery from injury that every athlete needs. And this is why this book stood out to me is that my boy Matt Fitzgerald says that this is a sign reading for every injured athlete I coach. So if you're really interested in this topic, I'd recommend buying this book underlining, taking notes, and reading it. Otherwise, you'll be able to find a lot of its ideas in this video. So just as there is a physical component to injury, there's also a mental component to injury as well. And how you go about your recovery, both physically and mentally, will have a huge impact on how that recovery process plays out. In the opening pages of the book, Cheadle and Kuzma write, the degree to which an athlete recovers from injury varies, as does the ease with which they do so. You can work on your mental skills to improve your injury experience. And this is exactly what I want to focus on in this video. Positivity can be quite powerful. And on the flip side, negativity can be equally powerful. The mindset that an athlete adopts while they're injured will most definitely have an impact on the recovery process. Researchers from the British Journal of Sports Medicine concluded that positive psychological responses including motivation, confidence, and low fear were associated with a greater likelihood of returning to the pre-injury level of participation and returning to sport more quickly. They also write that maladaptive psychological responses may be detrimental to the athlete's ability to return to their previous level of sports participation and may also affect the quality of sports performance increase the risk of re-injury. So how an athlete thinks about their injury, whether positive or negative, will have a serious impact on their recovery. Positive psychology equals better recovery. Negative psychology equals worse recovery. And if you're anything like me, I want to do everything within my control to get back to competition as quick as possible. So this is pretty important stuff. A study from the Journal of Applied Sports Psychology describes the characteristic associated with recovery as hardiness, which I personally like a lot. Findings revealed that athletes high in hardiness were able to express stress-related growth because their support network provided them with an outlet for their emotions, which enabled them to reframe their injury from a stressful event into a challenge to overcome. An important area of research regarding injury recovery is the topic of stress-related growth. Stress-related growth is this theory that when an individual is faced with difficult life circumstances, those difficult circumstances will ultimately lead to personal development. Or in other words, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. 
And as an athlete that understands progressive overload, we understand and totally get that our bodies need to be stressed above baseline if we expect that baseline to be increased at all. An important part of adopting a stress-related growth mindset is this reframing your injury as a challenge to be overcome. Matt Fitzgerald in his book, The Comeback Quotient, describes these challenge-driven individuals as ultra-realists. Ultra-realists have something many of us don't, an extraordinary readiness to face reality. And if you want to fulfill your own potential, you want that too. Ultra-realists and adopters of stress-related growth don't sit around and make excuses that they're injured. Rather, they put the pedal to the floor and drive full speed ahead upon the recovery process. And this mindset shift needs to take place if you want to get back to your sport as quickly as possible. Can an athlete come back from injury even stronger than they were before that injury? I think it depends, but I totally find this to be a possibility. The research on hardiness and stress-related growth points out that three areas of improvement, physical growth, psychological growth, and behavioral growth. Notice that it's called stress-related growth and not stress-related recovery. Growth implies that something ends up bigger or better than it did before. So if you believe in stress-related growth, then naturally it would make sense that an, an athlete would end up stronger than they were before they were injured. And there seems to be a couple reasons why this could be true. An athlete could return to sport physically stronger than before injury because of a focus on training rather than competition throughout the recovery process. There are all kinds of fascinating stories of athletes who get injured in the first half of the season and have to focus on training and can't compete, but then they have stellar second halves of the season because of that focus on training. They go into the second half season fitter and fresher than their competitors who have been racing all year long. And I can personally attest to this because when I broke my hand a few years ago, I had the best nationals result at elite cyclocross nationals I've ever had in my career. An athlete could also return to sport psychologically stronger because of the focus on process-oriented goals throughout the recovery process and the daily grind of recovery. Ultimately, an injured athlete is going to spend more time visualizing and thinking about their sport because of the recovery process. An athlete could also return to sport behaviorally stronger than before injury because of a rejuvenated love for their sport. As the old saying goes, you don't really realize how much you care about something until you lose that something. And this often leads to a uh, increase in motivation because now they realize how grateful they are to be able to perform that sport. So with all this being said, the athlete and the coach need to figure out how to develop motivation, confidence, and a lack of fear throughout recovery, which is much easier said than done. And here are a few strategies for you to employ during your time as an injured athlete. Yep, that's right. I'm about to talk to you all again about how important setting goals are. And because I've already talked about this topic extensively in multiple videos that you can go back and watch, I'll keep it short. Setting goals motivates your daily action. When an athlete is serious about their goals, they'll be serious about the daily grind required to achieve those goals. The British Journal of Sports Medicine writes, Building the athlete's confidence in the injured body part, particularly with the use of goal-setting strategies regarding returning to sport, may assist the return to sport transition. And Matt Fitzgerald in the Comeback Quotient writes, For the ultra-realist, goals exist not to be achieved, but to stimulate striving and to drive progress toward the fulfillment of potential. This is why champions set goals that are hard to achieve and why they welcome opportunities to raise their game. Or in other words, the first step to achieving big goals is setting big goals. In Rebound, Cheadle and Kuzma remind us that we're still athletes, but recovery is now our sport. And I really like this mindset. This kind of puts the athlete back in the driver's seat. And if you're like me and most athletes, you take your training very seriously. And so thinking about your recovery process as training will probably help you to take it very seriously and to get back to your sport quicker. 
Adjusting your goals is also a normal part of the process and should be expected to happen eventually. Obviously, I had big goals for the month of June. And if I were to just bury my head in the sand and stay committed to those goals, rather than pivoting and changing my goals to focus on the latter half of the season, I'd be missing out on a lot of my athletic potential. It may come to no surprise that how closely you follow your doctor's prescriptions has a huge influence on how quickly you will recover. Your adhering to their advice is important rather than you just doing what you think is best. Note here, you are not the trained medical professional. And what we're really talking about behind this adherence is the question, do you trust your medical team? And if the answer is no, then you should probably find a new medical team. And I would suggest asking teammates or coaches who have had experience with injury who could refer you to a trusted medical team that might point you in the right direction. Another big thing that comes with trusting your doctor is asking the right questions and getting the right info. If you know why your doctor is saying you need to stay in a cast for three weeks, you're a lot less likely to cut it off after two. I may or may not have personal experience with this. But if my doctor had told me that it takes three weeks to rejoin a bone, then I probably wouldn't have cut that cast off a couple years ago. And I probably would have adhered to his advice. But I should have asked those questions and that info should have been given to me. To combat this, you should probably write down questions in a journal or at the very least keep a note on your phone with those questions so that when you get to the office, which is it's really easy to forget questions when you're sitting right in front of the doctor. You can just whip out this journal or whip out your phone and ask those questions when you're on the spot. This is important. For example, you might ask, if I can I still do high intensity intervals or will this slow down the bone healing process? These are good questions to be asking your medical team. The Rebound book also has three simple things that you can focus on throughout your recovery process. Accept, adapt, and act. The first step is to accept reality and let go of the things that you can't control. The sooner that you accept that you're injured, the sooner that you can start the recovery process, which means the sooner that you'll ultimately end up back in competition. The second step is to adapt to the circumstances that you've been dealt. This means you need to pivot or side shift when things get blurry. This means that when your doctor told you you could race in four weeks, but the x-rays sh- x-rays show that you need a little bit more time to heal, then you're going to have to reorient your goals and adapt and maybe skip that race and focus on the race coming up in a couple more weeks. The final step is action. And this is what athletes are all about. What can I do to get better, faster, and stronger throughout this process? And the Rebound book describes it as doing what you can right now to create the best possible future. It's very easy as an injured athlete to constantly ruminate on what could have been. And this is a slippery slope for your mental health during injury. I mean, what good is that going to do for the here and now? Mindfulness is the ability to bring yourself back to the here and now, and this is exactly the skill that we need to overcome these hard times. To constantly think about what could have been is to be disconnected from reality. And like I've already said, you need to accept reality, adapt your goals, and move forward. This is exactly what the ultra-realists that Matt Fitzgerald describes in his book, The Comeback Quotient, are great at. They're really good at changing their goals to make the best possible outcome with the cards they've been dealt. One way you can practice mindfulness is simply writing things down. The act of writing things down in a journal helps us to process our emotions, which could be a huge step in the right direction for our recovery. I would even suggest that you write down things that you're grateful for. Being grateful for things that you have versus grieving over things that you've lost is a good mindset to have throughout recovery. You'll need four types of support throughout your recovery process, and here they are. You'll need emotional support, and I don't just mean a fluffy dog that you can pet and make yourself feel better. What I mean is things that help you process your emotions and feelings and ultimately improve your psychological well-being. This is most likely going to come from the people who are closest to you, your family, your friends, your teammates, 
and your coaches. You'll also need tangible support. This means that CJ is going to be opening a lot of jars over the next 10 weeks because ultimately I can't do that. Tangible support is all about your day-to-day -day functioning. You'll also need motivational support. This is the teammate that encourages you along the way or the coach that still believes in you despite your injury. Motivational support inspires confidence and creates momentum. And you'll need informational support. This could come from you asking questions with your medical team or just doing your own personal research. Either way, you end up with wise counsel and essential knowledge. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is our identity as a human. Each of us has what sociologists might call a self schema. This is a set of beliefs or things that you do that ultimately define who you are as an individual. This is your identity. And if you're an athlete, then you have what researchers call to some extent an athlete identity. This means that you participate in sport and in many ways think of yourself as an athlete and feel more yourself when you're able to participate in that role as an athlete. This has all kinds of positive outcomes, uh, motivation and personal drive and all kinds of uh, commitment and dedication, all kinds of good things. But it also has bad things, say for example, when you crash and you can't participate in your role as an athlete. This 2021 review of athletic identity and injury states that when an athlete is unable to engage in sport, as is the case when an athlete sustains an injury, depressive symptoms may occur due to ego dissonance. This is an incongruence between who an individual believes themselves to be and their ability to fulfill their role responsibilities. For some athletes, injury devastates their entire lives and they end up losing all meaning of life and they freak out. While on the other hand, some athletes seem to handle injury quite well and quite smoothly. And what is the difference between these athletes? Identity. If an athlete has their entire identity wrapped up in one sport or in one thing, when that one thing gets taken away, they lose all purpose and motivation and it's a quick spiral from there. However, when an athlete has what researchers called a multifaceted self schema, then they tend to handle injury quite a bit better. And I believe I fall into the latter. In fact, I've had several of my teammates tell me that they've been pretty impressed or encouraged to see how well I'm handling my recovery. And I'm not gonna lie, it sucks not being able to race my bike and to have trained all spring for these races and now I can't participate in them. That sucks and I'm not about to beat around the bush and say it doesn't. But the good thing is, my identity isn't totally wrapped up in cycling. My identity, who I am deep down, is completely and totally rooted in my faith. My identity is in Christ and nothing can take that away. My identity is through and through a Christian. I'm a Christian through and through and nobody or nothing can take that away from me. And that is a really good, reassuring feeling. That gives me confidence no matter what because I might break both my legs and never be able to race my bike again, but my identity will still be solidly found in Christ. A verse that really helps to remind me of this is Galatians 2.20, which says that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I want to end this video by asking you the question, what is your identity founded upon? And if your answer is anything other than Jesus, then realize that you might be standing on shaky ground. Whereas if your answer is that your identity is in Christ, that is a sure foundation that cannot be shaken. So that's all I've got for this video. Be sure to subscribe and like and watch the other videos if you want to, share them with your buddies, all that kind of stuff. If you really like the content that I'm putting out there, then you can leave a 20 in the tip jar. What I mean is that you can go over to Patreon and become a monthly supporter. This is gonna help me to put out more and more content similar to this one. And if you wanna take your training to the next level, there's two things that you can do. You can purchase a, a quick and easy Training Peaks plan on the Training Peaks library, or you can sign up for one-on-one -on -one personal coaching with a coach through Ignition Coach Co. 
This is the company that me and Dylan have started and it is all about turning racers into coaches so that you get a top-notch coaching experience. Thanks for watching. Y'all stay ride. See you in the next one. Yeah.